Hello, friends. My journey continues and someone is hiding in my bag. What? Bunny? This is a horror show, not a bunny show. Oh no. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. That night Anna had another dream. In this dream, she was standing in the middle of her bedroom. The wooden floorboards and white walls were all silvery gray in the moonlight. She could hear scratching coming from the walls and the floor. The sound was light at first and then it got louder, more desperate. She heard a low mewling sound start from under her bed. It sounded like a cat in pain but then it was screeching louder like a hawk and the sound was everywhere. It was inside her head. She put her hands to her ears to try to block it out but that only made it worse. Her back was against her windowsill now and she heard the crying coming from outside. It was a human crying. Her eyes snapped open and she could feel the cool air from the window and she knew she was awake. She turned and looked out the window and saw her father shambling towards the pigsty. He was shouting to himself, crying, dry heaving but still walking toward the animals. She slipped down the hall and passed her mother and father's room. The door was slightly ajar and she could see her mother standing at their window in her nightgown, watching him too. She turned toward her daughter and her face looked as white as the moon, as white as bone. She looked like a corpse. For a moment, Anna had a wild thought that it was a mannequin, something her mother had put up for sewing but then it moved towards her. She walked towards the door looked at Anna with nothing but pity and deep sadness and shut the door. She heard her mother drag a chair over and prop it underneath the door handle. Anna pulled herself away from the door and wandered down the hallway to the stairs. She wanted to go back to her room and lock her own door, but she couldn't. She was scared for herself but more scared for her father. Something was wrong with him. Something had been wrong with him for a long time but she felt that it was being kept from her, that secret. Her father seemed to disappear into himself around this time every year and her mother warned her to keep some distance from him. She said it was the work, the harvest season that gave him stress. She left the house through the back screen door and stepped into the cool night. Her bare feet touched the damp grass as she walked towards the sounds of squealing pigs. She approached the pen slowly and could see the pigs pushing towards the fencing. They were trying to get away from something and there was a clear circle in the center of the pen. Then a scream, high and human-like cut through the night. The rest of the pigs went silent, but for that one dying animal in the center. Then it went silent too. She moved closer, her legs trembling, threatening to give way, and then she saw a figure rise up. It was her father, but he was changed, his shoulders enormous and hulking, his mouth too big and dripping, his face long and pointed like a hyena. He was clutching half of the pig in fingers that looked like claws, gnarled and sharp and much too long. He was covered in blood that looked black in the moonlight. He looked up at the moon and cried out. He howled, an agonized cry that made her moan with fear. Then he knelt again and she could hear gurgling, ripping sounds. She tried to run but her knees buckled and she knelt there, sobbing. She put her hand over her mouth to stop the sounds. She looked back towards the house and saw her mother's ghostly figure in the window, watching. The pigs started to squeal again and she looked back and saw the beast standing in the center looking right at her, gore and flesh hanging from his mouth. His eyes were black sockets with flickers of sickly yellow light burning deep down, down through tunnels that seemed miles long. He locked eyes with her and she saw his body, convulse once, flinching at her presence and then go stiff as he assessed his prey. She screamed then, loud, 
and managed to make it to her feet. He made a lightning fast move towards the fence to get to her but stumbled on the circling, grunting pigs. She saw him go down. She ran towards the woods to try to cut to the road. All her mind could think was to get into town, to get some help. She pushed through the trees and bushes, oblivious to the scratches that were opening up on her face and arms from the sharp bramble. She ran, her throat on fire and her body numb. She ran until she got to a clearing. It was so bright from the moonlight she squinted against it. She saw the path that led to the road on the other side, but it was obstructed by a mound of dirt and debris in the center. She ran towards it, but as she got closer she saw that it wasn't a pile of dirt. It was a pile of blooded animal carcasses. There must have been near a hundred dead animals piled high, their dead eyes staring dumbly this way and that. Suddenly, she was being hurled to the ground. The wind was knocked out of her and before she could even try to take a shuddering breath, she felt her arms being pinned down. Something was on top of her. Then something hit her. She felt an explosion of pain on her right cheek as warm blood dripped down into her ear. She looked up, dazed, and saw that it was a boy. It was the boy from town. Two figures appeared on either side of him his friends. Her eyes rolled back and forth between them trying to focus. Another hit to her eye and the pain jolted her back into reality. She looked into the eyes of the boy and could see the fury there. Got you, you dumb bitch, he spat in her face. The other boys laughed. She realized the one on the left had a bat and the one on the right had a rope. The boy on top of her leaned down into her face. You're gonna be nice now, right? I figured you might want to apologize to me. We're gonna have a good time now, he was smiling. Anna whipped her head up and crushed his nose with her forehead. Fresh blood exploded out of his face and flooded her mouth. She coughed and spit. He screamed. Tie her up, he screamed. The other boys began to tie up her arms and legs. I knew you and your family were a bunch of fucking freaks. I knew it. They'll give me a goddamn medal for putting a stop to this evil shit. He looked at the pile of animals and then to the surrounding woods. She could see the fear behind his anger. But first, we're gonna have some fun, he said. He licked her face from chin to eyebrow. He looked at her, wanting to see her fear, her submission. She spat blood into his eyes. She had plenty in her mouth. He grunted and wiped his stinging eyes with his shirt sleeve. He looked at her with such hate then that she knew he probably meant to kill her. He put his hands on her throat and started to squeeze. One of the boys laughed and howled like a wolf, but not like any real animal. They sounded small and foolish in the dark of the forest where real monsters roamed. The boy was straddling her, holding her neck and smiling and then he sat up and howled at the moon as well. There was a whizzing sound and then a thud and his head were gone. Anna gulped in fresh air as his grip loosened and then fell away. His body slumped over and fell to the ground. The other boys were screaming, running. She rolled over on her side gasping for breath and saw her father, or what he had become, standing over her. He looked at her and then leapt over to the boy's rolling head. He picked it up and tossed it onto the pile of dead animals and then went off into the trees after the other two. On the other side of the clearing, closest to the road, Anna could see dark figures lining the trees, some had torches. She didn't know how many there were. They were watching. Then suddenly they began to retreat back towards the town and she could see there were many, stretching all the way back to the road. Anna closed her eyes. The shock and loss of oxygen were too much for her and everything went black. When she woke up, she gasped in cold air and sat up. The sky was starting to lighten with the day. 
Her ties were cut and she sat up and saw her father was crouching next to the rotting pile nearby. She looked at the pile of animals and saw the heads of the three boys neatly lined up on top, their faces eternally frozen in screams. Father and daughter regarded each other. His eyes were his. He seemed afraid of her, ashamed maybe. She crawled to him, put her arms around his neck and hugged him gratefully. He wrapped his arms around her and hugged her back. Looking over his back. She could see a ring of more carcasses, deer, dogs, cows, and more bloody meat sacrifices that she couldn't identify, didn't dare try to identify for her own sanity's sake. They were littering the tree line where the town's people had stood, their own yearly offerings left to be collected. He picked her up and carried her back to the house, their duties for that year's harvest complete. Pop. She looked up at him with tired eyes. He looked down at her. Those boys. She started. They won't be missed. But their parents. Their parents should have taught them the rules. You're a woman now. It's time your mother and I teach you too. It's the time you know what you are. Anna closed her eyes and slept.